Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson of IQ Designer and My Design Center. In this video we're going to focus on more line scans and in a previous video we worked on a line scan like this where the lines were of an even width, they were solid, very easy to scan and even this one right here we scan this one and it produced a beautiful scan. So what happens when we get to designs that are more complex or have lines of different widths? So if you look at this one right here, this is the one that we're going to scan and you will look at the outside perimeter and notice that one of these lines is thicker, one is thinner, and then we have some black regions in here. So we're going to see how IQ Designer and My Design Center scans this image. So I'm going to put this on my scan mat and we're going to see how this works. So join me at the screen. As always, before beginning any scan, I do recommend dimming the lights. You want to make sure you're at the home screen. Press IQ Designer or My Design Center at the lower right. Press OK and your machine will move that scan mat into position. Because this is a black and white drawing that we're trying to scan or print out, we're going to use Create Line Image first because most of the time that's what you're going to use to get the best results. So I'll press Create Line Image and then press Scan and then press OK, and we're going to wait for the machine to scan the image. After scanning, I need to crop the image. Now remember, I have some wording here on my printout. I have the magnets on both sides, so I'm going to press and hold my arrow keys at the lower right, and press and hold the arrow key at the upper left. And I'm gonna crop as close as I can get to that image without cropping anything off the image. You look up right up here at the top. I might have cropped off that top line, so let me readjust that. And sometimes it's easier to use a stylus, sometimes it's not. You have to decide what you're most comfortable with. And then press OK when you're finished cropping. When you're finished cropping, again, you could play with your grayscale detection level and then choose the suitable detection level that you feel is good. And I'm going to just try going over to the right and I'll press retry, see what happens. Not much. Um, this time, I think I'm going to try it right here and just stick with that one that's kind of more on the right, but not the farthest. All right, so I'm going to press set. Again, you would have to look at that very closely on your screen. Now, after we crop it, you can see what we crop in the red bounding box, but we always see the background image, all right? So we wanna make that background image temporarily disappear. And I'm going to do that by pressing this right arrow key over here. So when I press that, all right, no background image now. It doesn't mean that we can't retrieve that image. It just means we made it temporarily disappear. From here, oh, look. That phrasing is still there. Did I not crop this out? Maybe I didn't. I thought I did. But if we have something left over, what I'm going to do is I can go and use my eraser. And because I am at 100%, I'll use the largest eraser. And then I'll just use my finger to take that out. Okay. All right. I have that all out. Now here's the image that I'm trying to work with. And I'm going to magnify it at, let's say, 400% just to to zoom around and you can see right here, some of this, we might have some extra pixels in there. Overall, I don't think it looks that bad. But if you remember from looking at that scan, some of the areas in between that were solid black are not solid black. So I want you to be aware of how the scan interprets the data into what you can work with to create an embroidery design. Looking at the lines on the outside, remember one of these was thicker and one was thinner. It interpreted that as both thin lines, not one being thicker, not one being thinner, but about the same size. And I want you to be aware of this if you want to use your red box. If you have a more advanced machine, a newer high-end machine, you can use your pan hand and go around and just check out that entire design. Overall, I don't think it looks uh, too bad. I think it looks pretty good. Let's see what happens when we press next. And this is something that I always want you to do before you ever start erasing or manipulating the design. Bring it up, delete what you, or erase what you don't want. Like if you're still seeing magnets, or you're seeing wording or anything that shouldn't be in there, erase that. Then press next and then press preview. The reason why is that sometimes your scans are extremely complex 
And if you don't do this step that I'm showing you right from the start, you may get a warning that says there's too much information and the machine cannot process that. And I'll tell you, that is a horrible thing to happen when you have put an hour or two into working on your design only to get to this screen and have it bomb out on you because it can't process this. It's just too complex. So always run through to the end and then you can press return and then you can manipulate it. Now, when we are at this screen, remember in previous videos where I said, when you scan something, not everything may scan in as the same as like one continuous line. If you look right here, you can see the halo effect around the outer portion of the design. If I use my right arrow key, and let's do it again. See how now it's just highlighting just each part of these is an individual part of the design. And oh my goodness, can you imagine having to change each one? So if you want to change all of the lines together, you know what to press, your locking icon. So that little chain link right there, press that so it's blue. And now you'll see the halo effect around the entire design. This is where you can change your line from maybe a satin stitch. Let's try the running stitch and press OK. And let's see, let me press cancel right there. All right, I'll press preview, press OK, and let's see what it looks like. And it takes a little time to process. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with this. I'm not getting any weird errors, like it's too complex. And this is basically showing you what you're seeing on the paper with a couple differences. Like I said, some regions aren't filled in. You could fill in those regions with black if that's what you wanted. But overall, I'm really pleased with this scan. So let's try a different scan. Here is the second scan we're going to do, and I want you to pay careful attention to the detail that you see in this design. Now, this is about three inches by three inches, just to give you an idea on this eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Take a look at those eyes, and I want you to focus on the eyes of the cat because I want you to see how this scans. Now, this is very complex. All right, you got a lot of lines in here. So I'm gonna put this on my scan mat, and let's see how this produces a scan, if it's good or not so good. I'm ready to scan the cat, so I'm going to go home, press OK. Back at my home screen, I'm going to go back into IQ Designer or My Design Center, press OK, and let that scan map move into position. I'm going to use Create Line Image. It is a black and white line drawing. Press Scan, and then we're going to wait for that scan to complete. My scan is complete, so I'm going to go and crop that image. Now, I just have a very small image here. Just readjust that screen, bring it down over here. Just press and hold those arrow keys and get close to the design, but you don't want to cut anything off. All right, I'll press OK, and let's see what I got there. I'm just going to leave the grayscale detection where it is. Again, when you're at home, you can play around with this to get the best possible scan. I'm going to set that design. And here is my background. So what I'm gonna do is make my background disappear, press that right arrow key, so it just shows me what I'm working with. Now, this is very complex. Before I do anything, I'm going to press Next and press Preview. Now, this is gonna look really crazy because remember, it defaults to the satin stitch and those lines are close together anyway. So it's probably gonna look kind of messy. Let's see how it interprets the data. And the more complex the design, it takes longer to actually uh, process this information. And you can see it is very detailed and it basically looks like a black blob. So let me press return. And I'm gonna change this to the running stitch. But before I do anything, I'm going to press my chain link because I just don't know if there are separate parts in here, and using your chain link function is always gonna be beneficial to you if you're changing every line at once. Then press uh, your satin stitch up here, running stitch, and you could change the color if you want. I'll leave it at black, press OK, and then press preview, and then OK. Let's see how this turns out. Wait for it to process. Okay, here we go. So I think we're going to return and then press cancel. And then we're back at the screen right here. Now I wanna rotate this cat. So remember, make sure you choose your selection tool right here because there's no red bounding box around it. And we can't do these icons right here unless 
we tell it what we're working with. So as long as you have the selection tool highlighted, use your stylus or your finger to highlight that design. Then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to the right. There we go, there's our cat. Now remember what I said, pay attention to the eyes. I'm going to magnify this and I'm gonna go up to 800%. And let's go over to the eyes were somewhere in here, okay? I can't really tell where. I guess if I compare it to the scan that I did, the actual piece of paper, I could find those eyes. Maybe if I go out to 400, all right, I, I, all right the eyes are gonna be right there. Could I go in and clean that up? Yes, but looking overall at this scan, I don't know if this is a scan that I would be tempted to work with and use. There's just so much detail in here and the machine did not scan it in what I would say um, efficient and effective enough to use as an embroidery design. To me, I would call this a failure and I would not use this type of image that I printed out as a scan. I just don't think it's good quality. Okay, so, you know, again, here it is. And this is one that I would just say, oh, not good. My machine can't handle it. Let's move on to the next one now. Here's another printout that I'm going to scan. Notice we have our hummingbird and we have a lot of very thin lines. And I want you to focus in on the detail on that hummingbird. So we do have a fair amount of detail in there and just check that out. Let's see if I can get it so you can see a little bit better. All right, so let's see how this one scans. I'm going to put it on my mat, and then I'll join you back in this video after it scans. I did use the line scan option on this design, and I'm going to crop the image using my arrow keys. Remember, press and hold, bring it close to the image, but not cutting anything off. Sometimes that's a little tricky to do, just do your best. All right, then press OK. And I'm going to leave it right at that mid setting, and then I'm gonna press set. Let's check it out. Let's erase or temporarily disable the background by pressing that right arrow key. And I'm just going to magnify this, see how it looks. I, it's okay. Um, I could clean it up. Again, this is one of those things where the more you scan, the more you will know if it's an image that you wanna work with. Could I clean this up? Yes, but I think it would take a lot of effort. This might be one I would be willing to try. I'm just not 100% sure. The more you try to work with these scans, the more you will realize on your own how much effort it's going to take and if it's worth taking that effort to you. Just there are some pictures that are going to be better, better than others. So if I move this around, all right, so let's see right here. You know, some of the areas look pretty good. All right, and then we can scan down. But only you can decide if this is something that you want to turn into an embroidery design. I'll bring it back out to 100% before I ever do anything with it other than rotation and erasing. Make sure you press next and then preview because you don't want to get into that situation where it says the machine cannot process this design. That happens. And you just, like I said, you hate to put so much time into it. All right, not very good. We're working with the satin stitch. You can barely see anything. I'll press return. And then I'm going to press my locking key right here to lock every part of the design together. I'll change this to a running stitch. And let's see how this looks. Press OK and press preview and press OK. All right. Like I said, the larger the design, the more complex, the longer it will take to process this. Okay, so let's check it out right here. Um, you know, not too bad, not great, but not bad. And I'm gonna return and we're going to do one more design. So what I'm gonna do is go back home, press OK, and I'm going to swap out and show you my last design for scanning. Here's the last item I'm going to scan. You'll notice that there is a dark, thick black box around the design. The mermaid, the outline of the mermaid, outline of her hair is a thicker line as opposed to many of the thinner lines. And let's just see how this scans. Now again, this is going to be a line drawing. I'm going to put it on my mat. And what I wanted to tell you that I haven't told you up until now is if you look at 
Sorry about that. My hand's in the way. If you look at where my threads are, I pulled most of my threads up. You don't want your threads hanging down in that needle area. Pull it back because that thread itself can produce noise in an image when it's scanning. So be aware of that and just pull it back or cut it off and pull it through so you don't see any of those threads in the area which this is going to scan. All right, so join me back at the screen. My mermaid scan. Again, I'm going to use my cropping arrows and crop out the part of my scanned image that I do not want to digitize. Bring it as close to the design as you can and then press OK and let's see where we're at. All right, now this is something that I wanted to point out to you. If you look where that thick black line was around the design, see how that treated that. Okay, let me play with my grayscale detection retry see if i can improve that now it went away a lot of that noise if i go all the way to the left and it's not really noise when you think about it because it was dark to begin with but it's just how the line scan will interpret a thick line let me press retry okay and there it, it just totally took out that double line so i'm going to go all the way to the right and press retry and there's a reason why i'm doing that i'll press set and there we go now Again, let's make the background temporarily disappear by pressing this right arrow key. And now we can kind of rotate it and zoom in to see if we like what it like how it scanned. So let me rotate and 90 degrees. All right, press OK. And let me go in and zoom in to 400%. Again, if you have the pan hand on a newer model, that didn't look uh, too bad. OK, and I'll go down. Not great, but not bad. I think this might be something that I could work with. And I might choose to work with something like that if I really love that image and wanted to turn it into an embroidery design, okay? Now you can go back and erase parts that you don't want. Maybe you just want that mermaid. So if I go up to 200%, I could use my eraser. I'll choose the large one here. And you can erase what you don't want. That's up to you. You know, you got... This is yours to manipulate. I could take out that border right there, take this out. I would zoom in more if I wanted to really get nitpicky in what I am, you know, taking out of the out of the scan. But let me press next and I'll press preview before I do anything else. We really should do that preview first and see if I get any warning that it's not suitable. All right, so oh, here we go. Pattern extends to the outside of the embroidery area and cannot be converted. Okay, so what does that mean? Let me cancel this out, and it's just too close to the bottom right here. So let me go into my selection tool, and I'm going to move this up a little bit. And let's see, I'll go to rotate, and I'll just move that up. There we go. That should take care of that error or that message that we're getting. And let's press OK and see how it handles this. So don't be scared when you get a message. You just have to try to interpret as best as you can. Can't really see any details because of the defaulting to a satin stitch. I'll press return and use my chain link icon and change it to a running stitch. Let's see how that looks. Press OK, press preview, and press OK. And let's see what we got here. All right. Hey, I think that looks pretty good. And again, if you just wanted the mermaid, you could delete all of that with your eraser, really zoom in, clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up. And last but not least, always make sure you save your design before you go out of My Design Center or IQ Designer. I'll save it to the machine because I don't have a USB stick in right now. And I will press set and it's going to let me know, it's going to convert it. If you didn't save it, maybe you should think about doing that. Press okay. And here we go. I could stitch this out right now as an embroidery design. It might not look too pretty because I haven't cleaned it up, but just to show you the process of making sure that you are evaluating line scans. And I want you to scan as much as possible. Just keep scanning, coloring books, see how they work out, because then the more you scan, the more you will know what will scan the way you want it to with the minimum with the minimum amount of work. Okay, there's always a trade-off there. All right, you guys, thanks for joining me in this lesson. And the next lesson, we're gonna be working with adding some fancy stuff to our line drawings.